G'day everyone, welcome to this rundown for Global Stocks for the 29th of March. And as I've been saying for a long, long time, uh, I expect markets to continue higher over the medium to longer term, but I do expect increasing volatility, more sudden changes of direction. Uh, I don't know what really precipitated what occurred in America on Wednesday night. It was just a sudden burst of selling that uh, seemed to feed on itself. Um, and then the market steadied for the last two sessions. So let's have a look at uh, at what actually happened last week. The S&P 500 index ended up down 47 on the week, so it gave back uh, a fair amount of what it had gained the previous week. Look, I think it was a combination of some fairly predictable profit taking because there were certainly a lot of stocks that had perhaps got a bit ahead of themselves in terms of moving ahead of their uh, their long-term trend. There was certainly some concerns over the strong dollar hurting the overseas profits of the larger companies. And we've got the next quarterly re reporting season starting up in about uh, two weeks. So it will be very instructive to see uh, just how much impact there is on profits from the higher US dollar. And of course, uh, there were some concerns about the Saudi action in Yemen as well, and that, that caused gold to spike as well, and also oil. So I think a combination of all of those things started a little bit of selling, and then the computers just take over, and, and the stop losses get triggered, and, and down the market goes. It's unfortunate, but it's just the way that, that it is. But look, the good news is... Um, that this sort of volatility does create good buying opportunities because we get a crack at stocks at prices that we otherwise wouldn't without this sort of volatility. However, I'm not convinced that we've necessarily seen the finish of the selling yet. Uh, normally when you get these very sudden one day moves like this, the market will partially recover or it might go sideways for a little bit, but it's generally not the end of of the selling. Now, I'm not saying that'll occur this time, but generally it's not. There's often a bit more uh, selling to come. So I see a major buying opportunity in some of the, the best stocks. And of course, members of special share education know what those stocks are very clearly and where the value is. But um, we may not be quite there just yet. Now, turning to, uh, to the Australian market, um, the ASX 200 index uh, was down by 55 points on the week um, and the index is outperforming a lot of other uh, markets around the world, a lot of other indices around the world in the short term um, and that's for very particular reasons to do with yield but it's basically pushing the value of these yield stocks, the banks and Telstra and other high yielding stocks, um, it's pushing them higher and higher and uh, they're certainly not value. And I really see this as quite a dangerous situation. Um, if you, over the long term, if you want to get the most reliable results that you can, you just must wait for value and technical buying advantage, as I've been talking about in many forums over the last couple of years. Um, yes, you can make money. And yes, the banks might go up a bit further yet. But, but gee, the risks are just rising. Every, every dollar they go up, the risks are going up substantially and, and eventually it's going to come back and bite. It, it really is. So my overwhelming advice remains to seek uh, good value and good buying opportunities. And at the moment, the vast majority of that exists in America, not in Australia. Now, here's the S&P 500 index chart. As you can see, we got uh, a sudden move down on Wednesday and it then stabilized. We got a further move down on Thursday intraday, it then stabilized and was essentially flat for the next couple of sessions. Uh, I think it's a 50-50 uh, bet which way the market will go in the next few days. Will it, will it recover and just go straight back up again? Will it move further down here, perhaps towards the 2000 level again? Um, I really don't know and I don't think anyone else does either. So I'm, I know what stocks I want to buy. I know what what price represents fair value, and um, I'm looking for um, some conditions of oversold, which will give me very high probability entries. So uh, the, nothing changes in the trend. However, what may occur now is we're starting to get into a bit of a weaker period of the year, May, 
May, uh, June, July and into August is typically the weaker part of the year. So it's possible that we could see a big, broad, volatile sideways range at the index level. Uh, but the best stocks, of course, continuing to trend higher. So uh, I think that's a fair likelihood of occurring. Let's just have a look at the US dollar index because that certainly does have a big influence on stock markets. And this is the, the dollar index. You can see the purple line there is the 20-day uh, the uh, moving average. And the blue line is the 50-day moving average. Now, it just managed to have a little bit of a peak underneath the 20-day moving average, but uh, still hasn't got down to the 50 yet. So still no change in trend for the uh, US dollar index. And that's probably not uh, not great news for uh, for gold and uh, and other commodity prices. Now let's just look quickly at the Australian index. So the Australian index has done better over the last uh, couple of months, um, but that's largely because already fully to overvalued stocks have now become even more overvalued. And as I said in, earlier, that's just a quite a dangerous situation in my view. Now turning to commodities, uh, gold was up by uh, $16 on the week, finished at just a tick under $1,200. Um, and that's still not a definitive move in, in gold stocks where we're still stuck in this overall range that uh, this basing formation that, that has been in progress now for more than a year. It's probably just Middle East related at the moment. The Saudis action against Yemen uh, is uh, is causing this bit of a spike in gold. For, for gold to start to trend up, we need one of two things or both. One, the US dollar needs to change trend and start to head back down again. Or there needs to be some fear about financial system problems, the Greece leaving the euro and the impact on the euro or something of, of that nature needs to re-emerge. Otherwise, it's really difficult to see fundamentally uh, why gold would um, would head up from here. Copper was steady at $2.75 for the week. Um, the price action still continues to look a bit bullish, particularly considering the currency impact. So I'm certainly encouraged by that from a global economics recovery point of view. Um, that that really is quite a positive sign that, that copper has been able to move up against the trend of the US dollar. Now crude oil form, firmed uh, from the low 40s to, uh, to 50, uh, but that really was uh, about Yemen uh, and fears to interruption to, uh, to oil supply. Now if anything does blow up in Yemen, it's, um, it's likely to only be a, a short term impact. Um, it will just uh, really impact supply in the very short term. Uh, they're not a big producer, Yemen. They're they're really more of a it's really more of an access port to uh, to export oil, so uh, no lasting um, impact there. So I believe that uh, crude oil is heading back down again uh, to 40, possibly down into the 30s. And as I indicated last week, this bottoming phase um, can typically take between one and three months. So it may be complete by the middle of the year. Uh, however, uh, supply and demand for oil is still substantially out of balance. There needs to be uh, a, quite a significant amount of current supply needs to disappear from the market before uh, we're going to see the price of oil uh, start to firm up again. So let's just have a look at the, uh, the charts for gold. This is gold on a weekly basis, so you can see we're, we're still in this really frustrating big um, consolidation that started in July of 2013. So we're pushing towards two years of uh, consolidation in the gold price and it's, uh, and it's no more reso uh, resolved at this stage than, uh, than at any other time in the last couple of years. Uh, this is the gold price on a, uh, on a daily chart. As you can see, quite a nice rebound thanks to what's going on in the, in the Middle East. Uh, did come off a little bit on um, on Friday night. So we basically got up here, formed a, a, a double short-term double top, and the market has pulled back from that level. Let's just look at the gold stock index. Um, this is the HUI. 
And as you know, gold stocks will tend to lead the price of gold under most circumstances. And it's interesting that the gold stocks have turned down before the price of gold did. So um, I just don't see any signals yet that uh, gold is going to go into a sustainable uptrend. There's the spot copper chart. So you can see it certainly has rebounded quite nicely. And so just wrapping it all up, um, the overall strategic approach, I believe over the medium to longer term, I expect stocks to continue higher in what I would describe as an ideal environment. That is, we've got a degree of economic recovery in America. Uh, the global economy is not looking too bad. It's, it's not brilliant, but it's not too bad. It, it's, it is growing. Uh, we've got central banks around the world that have basically committed um, to keeping interest rates at close to zero. Um, the US Fed, whilst it's widely expected they'll start raising interest rates uh, fairly soon, they've put some provisos in there now that weren't there before. The fact that inflation needs to reach 2%, the fact that um, the uh, GDP needs to be not affected by the US dollar strength and also the labour market getting a bit stronger and and the probability of any of those three things occurring is actually pretty slight. So I actually think that there's going to be very, very little movement in interest rates in America and that creates what I would describe as an ideal environment for stocks. But when we get bits of volatility like that we've seen just in the last few days, um, from a strategic point of view, as members know, um, cashing up decisively for the next phase pays off. Uh, you've just got to know what to buy and what price to pay for it. As I indicated earlier, it's possible that the main indices around the world may be sideways for uh, the bulk of this year, um, but great stocks should outperform. So they're the ones that you should be looking for. Anyone who's a non-member of uh, Special Share Education that would like uh, more information about uh, how I can assist you, there's my email address. Please feel free to make contact with me. Pretty exciting week we've just had. Looking forward to next week and uh, talk to you next weekend. Cheers.